please join us in welcoming our program participants and Biola's Board of Trustees. Welcome, the faculty of Biola University. gentlemen, please welcome the Biola University graduating class of 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, the winter class of 2021. Let's give it up. You may be seated and welcome to Biola University's fall 
commencement. This is number one of four that we're having today, honoring graduates from Cook School of Intercultural Studies, Rosemead School of Psychology, the School of Cinema and Media Arts, and the School of Fine Arts and Communication. So congratulations again one more time, graduates. And it is on behalf of the Board of Trustees that I welcome each of you in the name of the Lord. Uh, we're honored that you have joined us for this commencement service, our very first December commencement in two long years. And to that I say Merry Christmas. Amen. So graduates, congratulations. Today, in this ceremony, you will be conferred with a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a doctoral degree, and, and I know you've worked hard to get to where you are, and I thank God for bringing you to Biola, and I thank God that you're leaving Biola, and I, I, think, I, I think you know what I mean. It's time. You know, I wish you great joy as you receive your degrees today. It'll be an early Christmas gift for you. Graduates, you've made us proud. Each of you has a story to tell and a lifetime to live out the unique way in which God has called you to be a, a light to this world as this faithful presence uh, for the gospel. You've been strengthened in mind and character through your education at Biola. And, and we have been strengthened because of you. I want to add that as well. You have made this university a better place. And I represent a very grateful community that you have invested these years of your life at Biola. And we pray, we do, we pray that your education, for some of you through your, your, your terminal degree, that it will be rich and timeless in the values that God has for us, his truth and his grace. And I pray that what you've experienced here will prepare you for your field of influence for the rest of your lives. And I do say many have been praying for you, and it's true. You are precious souls. You are beloved children of God. We pray that, that Christ's love um, permeates your life so that you can impact the world for him. And may God give you wisdom. May God give you favor. May God give you um, margin in your life to cultivate those relationships that really matter. And we want you to know that uh, many have been and will be praying for you as you leave Biola. And I know it's impossible for you to say that you got here alone. Um, we're going to acknowledge some of the, uh, the, the communities that actually helped you uh, reach this point where you are today. So I want to take a moment to honor some of the special uh, guests that we have here today. Are there any parents of graduates here? Where are you? Stand up so we can say thank you to the moms and dads. How about siblings? Any brothers or sisters in the house? And we may even have some spouses and kids. Where are you? <laughs> Grandparents? <laughs> Thank you for standing, grandmothers and grandfathers. And I know there are many others, friends and family members who are here today. No doubt the sacrifices of you and many who aren't here, many of you who are watching on our live stream, made this graduation day possible, including your resilience through the challenges of the pandemic. So parents, families, friends, you have entrusted these students to us and may today and the years to come affirm through their lives the true worth of a Biola education. So we honor you today celebrating with us. Some of you graduating today may be the first in, in your family to receive a college degree, first-gen students. If you want to stand up, stand up. We want to say thank you and congratulations to you. How about global students, international students in the graduating class? Where are you? Stand up. I always want to recognize those in our graduating class as well as anyone here today who are veterans who are, who are, have, 
are currently in active military service or in reserve, uh, please stand up so we can say thank you for your service to this country. We have faculty representatives here from, from Cook School, from Rosemead, Center of Media Arts, as well as School of Fine Arts and Communications. And, and we just, I, I can't say enough about the faculty of Biola University, these amazing professors that I have the honor to serve alongside, and brilliant, dedicated faculty members in each of our nine schools who are the heart and soul of this institution. So students, you know. You know these professors, they've invested in your lives over these past years, and what a remarkable body of teachers and mentors and scholars and practitioners, and I want to recognize them. So Biola's preeminent faculty, please stand and so we can express our gratitude to you. Thank you. You are so loved. You may be seated. And Board of Trustees, some of whom are here today, we recognize the faithful service of Biola University's governing board as you give of your energy and your time and your wisdom in so many ways, not only to keep this university, university missionally faithful but fiscally solvent. So thank you, Board of Trustees, as well. We have vice presidents, we have deans, administrators, and staff, and thank you for your faithful dedication, uh, evidence even in just like this graduating class that all of us have invested in. So thank you as well. I'd like to thank also our amazing events team for transforming this gymnasium into this uh, commencement arena. So day in and day out, uh, this is a dedicated team of, of men and women, uh, facilities, events, campus safety, others who made this event possible. Thank you wherever you are watching or here in the room, so let's express our thanks to them as well. This year, Biola has many reasons to give thanks as we come through this pandemic. Our outstanding and diverse student body continues to reflect the 113-year tradition of a biblically-centered, Christ-exalting, academically robust, compassion-oriented education with the expectation that our best days are still to come, as are yours. This year, we completed a uh, major renovation of Bardwell Hall. Those of you who graduated in the School of, of Fine Arts and Communications, and this former science building has tra been transformed into this epicenter, state-of-the-art building for our art students. What a difference this has made to the center of our campus, opened this fall as we also celebrated the uh, year of media and arts and the 50th anniversary of our art program here at Biola. So one more of the many, many ways in which Biola continues to advance this educational community for the benefit of our students and our graduates. Our students, including those of you graduating today, have excelled in so many other ways as well, through volunteerism in the community and the local church, missions trips around the world, achieving excellence in research and academic and athletics and music and art and science and theater and journalism and, and so much more. But above all, uh, this year we continue to uphold our time-honored commitment to the love of Christ and the authority of God's word and the renewing work of the spirit in this community. So that is something to celebrate. So please join me by standing for the invocation and remain standing for today's opening hymn. Please pray with me. Our Father God, creator of all, thank you for this day that you have made. We are glad and we rejoice in it. As we gather today to celebrate this milestone achievement, we thank you for the blessings that have made this moment possible. We thank you for the students' families that have sacrificed and worked to see this moment of triumph. We thank you for the friendships the students forged throughout these years. We thank you for the moments of discovery and insight, for the lessons learned, for the wisdom gained, for the joy and laughter, as well as the hardships, the challenges, and the tears 
that we have experienced together. Because through all these experiences, you, Lord, have made us wiser and stronger. Today, as we celebrate this grand accomplishment, we gratefully recognize your presence among us and your enabling power that guided us to this point. Therefore, we make the words of the psalmist our own words. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory for your unfailing love and faithfulness. We pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to sing along, Silent Night. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we have been surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, 
fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition for sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Our commencement speaker this morning is a dynamic rising leader in both the church and the academy. J.P. Foster is well known and regarded on this campus. He has two degrees from Biola University, undergraduate degree from Biola University and a graduate degree from Talbot School of Theology. He's now working on his doctorate degree at Talbot School of Theology. So I hope someday soon to be able to say, we've given you the third degree. It's my hope, JP. Many of you who are graduating know JP and his passion and integrity for serving Christ, whether it's in the classroom where he teaches as an adjunct professor or in his chapel messages or any other time. He's just on a campus uh, sitting down and talking to you mentoring and listening and caring and loving. As co-pastor at Faithful Central Bible Church here in Los Angeles with Bishop Kenneth Ulmer, Pastor Foster has the unique blessing of being mentored by Dr. Ulmer for many years. And it's especially fitting in today's commencement ceremonies, all four of them. They are being shared by these two godly men this morning, this afternoon by Pastor Foster and then the latter two services will be addressed by his mentor, Dr. Kenneth Ulmer. J.P. Foster is quickly becoming an influential figure in Southern California and beyond, with a ministry fueled by a passion for Scripture and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to transform lives in a needy world. His excellence in Bible exposition, I'm proud to say, was kindled and shaped in his undergraduate and graduate studies here at Biola University where he also received his master's degree from Talbot. His breadth of study and scholarship includes time at Oxford University in the area of church unity and reconciliation, at the King's University in organizational leadership, at Moody Bible Institute in prophetic literature, and he is now finishing, as I said, his doctorate back home here at Biola's Talbot School of Theology. How grateful we are for Pastor J.P. Foster's gentle wisdom, passion for biblical justice and reconciliation, his friendship, his kindness, and his mind. I've sought out his counsel on ways in which I can be a better leader and more faithful follower of Jesus. And I count myself to be a friend of yours, J.P. Foster, and the beneficiary of many of your good nuggets of wisdom and some healthy conversations and ways in which you have made me better not just as a president of this university, but as a follower of Jesus. This husband, this father, this brother in Christ, it is with profound joy and appreciation that I ask you to join me in welcoming our commencement speaker, Pastor John Paul Foster. class of 2021. I'm, I'm so grateful to be here with you. And I want to share something with you. I've walked across this stage two times. And I talked to Dr. Corey before the commencement about the flashbacks I've had since coming here to the commencement today and how amazing God is. And so I prayed and thought to myself, what can I say to encourage you? What has God done in my life since I walked across this stage? And if you don't get anything else about, out of what I'm going to say today, I want to encourage you to run for your life. When I think about the things I've accomplished, the things that God has been able to do in my life, I could not have accomplished any of it if I didn't run for my life. When you look at me standing here today, when you heard all of those words that Dr. Corey mentioned, I couldn't have accomplished or done any of what he mentioned if after walking across this stage, I'd ran for my life. 
The reason why I've succeeded is because I continue to run for my life. And in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, the writer of the book of Hebrews is encouraging believers to run for their life. He opens up and he says in chapter 12, verse 1, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and you must ask yourself, as he's encouraging these believers, why would he mention these cloud of witnesses? And anytime you're reading scripture and it starts and begins saying, therefore, you must always find out why, why the therefore and what the therefore is there for. And so he says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, he uses the cloud of witnesses to encourage believers to run. But who are these cloud of witnesses? If you continue, if you re- go back to chapter 11, the cloud of witnesses are what most theologians would call the hall of faith. And so he uses a group of men and women who trusted God to encourage these other believers to run for their lives. If you look at the list of, of believers, those who follow God in, in Hebrews chapter 11, you'll see, uh, you'll see Noah. And the word of God says, by faith, Noah build an ark even though he had never seen rain. If you keep reading, you'll see that Abraham is mentioned. And it says, by faith, Abraham obeyed God and went, even though he did not have all of the details. If you keep reading, you'll see that Sarah was able to have a child even though she surpassed childbearing age. She did it by faith. You keep reading, you'll see that by faith, Rahab welcomed the spies. Over and over again, you'll see that these men and women were able to do extraordinary things. Moses is mentioned. By faith, Moses was able to deliver the children of Israel, the people of God, by faith. It's an extraordinary list. You look at Moses and Abraham and Noah and Sarah and and Rahab, you think to yourself, my goodness, These are some amazing people. These people are extraordinary. But I would suggest to you these are just ordinary people. They're just ordinary people. And the reason why they were able to do extraordinary things is because they believed in an extraordinary God. It was God who enabled them to do extraordinary things. And thousands of years later, we're still talking about them because they put their faith in an extraordinary God. When you walk across this stage today, I encourage you to realize that you can do extraordinary things if you trust and believe in an extraordinary God. He says, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us run this race. Let's run the race marked out for us. It's not just a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a race of endurance. It's the journey of faith in God. And he says that we make it. So, so you may be asking yourself, well, how do I run for my life? The first thing you have to do when you walk across this stage is realize that you have to put your trust and faith in an extraordinary God if you want to do some extraordinary things for the kingdom of God. But the next thing he says is, um, I must remove any hindrance. He says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let's throw off anything that hinders. So how do I run a good race? The first thing we must do is, is, is trust in an extraordinary God. The second thing we must do is throw off anything that hinders you. When you walk across this stage, you'll be moving into a next chapter, a next season of your life, and I want to encourage you as you run for your life to throw off anything that may hinder you. When he, when he paints this picture of a runner of a race, he paints this picture of you throwing off anything that may hinder you. Many of you see track stars. Many of you see athletes, and they have their warm-ups on. And, but, but when you see the, the actual race begin, you never see the runner wearing the tracksuit. Because if they wore the tracksuit or if they wore the weight vest when they were training or if they wore the ankle weights or if they ran with sandbags, it would slow them down. They would never be able to run the race that God had called them to run if they had hindrances. So it's a picture of a runner literally stripping off burdensome clothing like a warm-up so that they could run their absolute best race. The trouble with hindrances are they don't necessarily stop you from running. They slow you down. And so even though you're moving, you won't be running your best race. When you walk across this stage today and you receive a diploma, I want you to throw off every hindrance 
that can slow you down from running the absolute best race that you can for the kingdom of God. But then he says, and then, then throw off any entangling sin. I've walked across this stage multiple times, and I promise you, when you move into this next chapter or next season of your life, you're going to be tempted. You're going to be tempted, and the Word of God says, if you want to run your best race, throw off anything that may entangle you. The entangling sin is, is very interesting because the hindrances don't necessarily stop you from running at all. They just slow you down so you're not running your best. But the entangling sin is almost a picture of a, of a fisher. You know, fish, you're going out fishing. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways that you can, uh, you can go fishing is you can use gill nets. And what gill netting does, it, al- it allows the net to get in between the back of the fin of a fish. And no matter how much the fin, the, the, the fish tries to move, because the, the net is caught behind their fin, because they're entangled in it, they cannot move forward. And as you walk across this stage, I don't want anything to stop you from running the race that God has for you. And so the runner says, how do I run for my life? I must trust in an extraordinary God if I plan to do extraordinary things. Then I must realize the hindrances, the things that are in my life that will hinder me from running my best race. But then I must make sure that I don't allow temptation to allow me to get entangled so I stop running the race that God has marked out for me. But this is the next one that I love. He says, but as I run my race, I run my race with my eyes fixed on Jesus. How do you run your best race when you walk across this stage? You, you, you can't run your race. In fact, if, if, you, if you are running in an Olympic race, there are some races that you'll run that if you get out of your lane, you're disqualified. If you look to the left, I've seen runners get distracted and lose a race. I've seen runners get distracted and cross over into someone's lane and just be disqualified. If you want to run the race that God has for you, we must run this race with our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter and finisher of our faith. And when I think about running, some, if I use my homiletical, exegetical imagination, I think about Forrest Gump. No matter how many times I watch the movie Forrest Gump, I never get tired of it. No matter how many times I watch the movie Forrest Gump, it dawned on me one day, everything he's accomplished, he accomplished it running for his life. When he, when he, when he uh, was a young boy and he had these, these braces on his legs because he couldn't quite move well, you know, he kind of walked like the tin man. And, and he, he couldn't, his mother said, was, but his mother encouraged him, just like many of your mothers and fathers and, 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 and grandparents have encouraged you, son, you have magic shoes. There's nothing you can't do. And so his mother encouraged him, but he had these braces and he did not know how much his, his ability was being restricted until he faced opposition. And some bullies came and they rode on a bike and they, they, they came to Forrest and, and they were trying to attack him. And all of a sudden he tried to get away from the bullies and one, he, he starts moving one foot and then one brace falls off this foot and the other brace falls off this foot. And next thing you know, Forrest Gump is running for his life. And Jenny says, run Forrest, run. <laughs> and, and at that moment, after he ran, everything Forrest Gump did, he did it running for his life. Then the same bullies that were on bikes, they've got a pickup truck because they're in high school now. They got a pickup truck and they chased Forrest. And what did Forrest do again? He ran for his life. He ran so fast, he cut across the town, cut across the football field. And one of the football coaches said, who's that? He said, I think that's Forrest Gump. And so Forrest Gump runs across the football field. Because he was running for his life, the coach asked him to join the team. Because he was running for his life, he got a scholarship to go to college. Because he was running for his life. But Forrest didn't stop there. Then he, he enrolled in the army. He, he, was, he was in the army. And as he goes now into battle, he saves his team's life. He saves other soldiers' lives because he is running for his life. Everything he accomplished. Then after that, he received a Purple Heart. How did he accomplish it? He accomplished it because he was running for his life. Everything Forrest Gump accomplished, he accomplished it running for his life. Now, I might not be Forrest Gump. But everything I've accomplished, I have accomplished it because I've been running for my life with my eyes fixed on Jesus. If you want to succeed when you cross this stage, you have to do it, class of 2021, with your eyes fixed 
on Jesus. So my, my, my declaration to you is when you walk across this stage, when you get your diploma, please, please, after you take your pictures with your family, run for your life with your eyes fixed on Jesus, you will succeed and you will accomplish things that will be above your imagination. Class of 2021, can you please run for your life? God bless you. Run for your life. Pastor J.P. Foster, thank you. That great admonition to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Um, you've stirred us. You have blessed us. And we look forward to hearing you at another time, just a few hours from now. Let's express our appreciation one more time, Pastor J.P. Foster. And now it's time to pivot, to use a very overused word during the pandemic, to the conferral of degrees uh, during this commencement ceremony. I'm going to invite to the stage the chair of the Board of Trustees at Biola University, Mr. Mike Maples, who makes some opening comments. And following Mr. Maples will be Dr. Deborah Taylor, our provost and senior vice president, who will introduce the various sections of those of you who will be graduating today. Please join me in welcoming our board chair, Mr. Mike Maples. The mission of Biola University is biblically-centered education, scholarship, and service, equipping men and women in mind and character to impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. We are grateful for these committed Christian students who have come to Biola for this reason. It is now a distinct privilege for us to present these diplomas to those who have finished their course and have demonstrated sustained intellectual growth and Christian commitment. Graduates, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I congratulate you and pray God's best for each of you as you seek to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in the days and the years to come. Congratulations. Good morning. As provost, it's my honor to add my welcome to this commencement ceremony where we will honor students, both our undergraduate and our graduate students, from four of our nine schools. The Cook School of Intercultural Studies. Are you out there? <laughs> Rosemead School of Psychology. Our newest School of Cinema and Media Arts. All right, I think they have the most enthusiasm, but we have one more, the School of Fine Arts and Communication. <laughs> Great job. All right, so in a moment, our school's deans will ask the candidates for degrees to stand by groups according to their school. And this morning, Dr. Zahavi Husser, who is the associate dean of the School of Fine Arts, will be filling in for Dr. Guy, who had a little grandson born early this morning. And then following the deans, I will present the candidates to the president for the actual conferral of your degrees. Then you will proceed to the platform. We will call your names by your faculty members who you have worked so hard with over these years, and then your diploma will be handed to you. Just a few words to you who are graduating. It is such a joy for us to be with you today. We always talk about the things that students have overcome during their time at Biola, but you stand apart. You have overcome significant things and you have persevered and you've developed resilience. So we are so proud of you. We know that this degree is going to mean so much to you as you leave Biola University. So we pray that you will go forth, you will shine as lights in the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we just wish you our hearty congratulations. And now each of our deans will come up and present the candidates for their degrees. Will the candidates for baccalaureate and post-baccalaureate degrees in the Cook School of Intercultural Studies please rise. Graduates, the Cook faculty and staff congratulate you on the successful completion of your studies. Today we rejoice with you and your families. The Cook School exists to equip students to communicate, live, and work effectively in culturally diverse contexts to make disciples of all peoples and impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. Our culturally competent graduates 
Engage in Christ's redemptive work in a rapidly globalizing world. Whatever your specific intercultural calling, whether mission work, community development, teaching, business, or other leadership roles, we encourage you and know that God is with you. Graduates, the world desperately needs the gospel message and Christians willing to bring that message, both domestically and internationally, with sensitivity and cultural humility. Now go in the name of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, into the work to which you have been called. Please be seated. Will the candidates for baccalaureate degrees in the Rosemead School of Psychology please rise? The integrated study of psychology helps us more fully understand ourselves, others, and God. For those receiving their bachelor's degree in psychology today, we trust that you've learned much about the science of human behavior, human brokenness and flourishing, relationships, and yourself. And whether you're planning to apply this knowledge to the workplace, enter a helping profession, or use your research skills to impact change in our world, May you stand firm in your faith and belief in our redemptive and relational God in whose likeness we are made. Congratulations, we are proud of you, very proud. Please be seated. All right, will the candidates for baccalaureate degree in the School of Cinema and Media Arts please rise? Within, I love it, within Biola School of Cinema and Media Arts, our graduates are charged with impressing and impacting the media industry and the world through it by your skills, your life, and your stories. As you step forward, you are commissioned to engage and inspire those around you as you provide hope to a world that needs to see and hear God's love through you. The media provides you the means to take your stories locally, nationally, and globally. So let your voices be heard. Our prayer for you is one of gratitude for allowing us to participate with you on this journey and one of encouragement. As a Biola family, we're proud to stand alongside you as you enter this next chapter in your life. We'll always be here for you as you seek out your supporting role in God's amazing story. Never forget that God's stage is all around you. Uh, you will be missed but stay close. Congratulations to our graduates, families, and friends. Please be seated. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate and post-baccalaureate degrees in the School of Fine Arts and Communication please rise? <laughs> Graduates, you have been part of a community of artists, scholars, and communicators committed to developing young men and women who will explore truth and beauty and express what it means to reflect the image of Christ. As such, I give you this charge. Through the power of the Spirit of God, whose love creates and sustains all good work, it is our prayer that you will fulfill the vision of the School of Fine Arts and Communication to rigorously engage, confidently lead, and humbly serve society in seeking the reconciliation of all creation to the Creator. 
May the Lord bless you and continue to guide you. Congratulations. Please be seated. We will now have a special presentation of the ringing of the bell. <laughs> the ringing of bells in churches and cathedrals traditionally calls the faithful to worship. This bell on our commencement stage today, along with the five bells on our bell tower, as part of the original set of 11 bells, rang from the top of Biola's original building in downtown Los Angeles more than a century ago, calling students to worship. And so it is as you, graduating students, leave this place. For Paul tells us that worship is presenting our bodies in every place, at every time, as living sacrifices to God. Just as we rang this bell, for many of you at your undergraduate orientation as you entered this university, your graduation today from Biola is an entrance into a new beginning of your service of worship in the world. I now ring this bell on behalf of the class of 2021. Now, will all the candidates for degrees please rise? Yeah. President Corey, on behalf of the faculty of Biola University, it is an honor to now present to you all of these candidates who have successfully completed all the requirements of their respective degrees. And so it is by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the State of California that I confer upon you, graduates of Biola University, your respective degrees with all the honors and privileges and rights pertaining thereto. Congratulations, you have now graduated from Biola University. Undergraduates, you can turn your tassel. May God bless you as you use your education to serve the Lord. So please be seated, and now as we prepare to present the diplomas, we'll hear Biola alumna Judy Kim lead us as she sings, God, I Look to You.
forever all my days I will love you God oh God I look to you I won't be overwhelmed give me vision to see things like you do oh God I Receiving the Doctor of Philosophy in Intercultural Education, Carol Stanley Meyer. <laughs> Jeanette Marie Schubert. Receiving the Doctor of Philosophy in Intercultural Education, in Intercultural Studies, Javier Adolfo Chavez Cuellar. Ryan Jensen. <laughs> Parnell Mac Loveless Jr. <laughs> Christian Ki Hyun Wee. <laughs> Receiving a Master of Arts in Intercultural Studies, Josephine Ann Condra. <laughs> Mark Aaron Condra. Joelle Gates Bassett. Kirsten Hewitt. E. Diang. Daniel Kim. Graduating on traditional ancestral unceded Tongva Gabriel Enyo tribal land with a Bachelor of Arts in Intercultural Studies, Berli Marlena Delgado, <laughs> Rachel Longepe, summa cum laude, Laura Olivia Reed, <laughs> Hannah Springer. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology, Cole Joseph Baker. <laughs> Emma Grace Brumel. <laughs> Christian Michael Caradonna. Yeah, 
Caleb Elledge. Derek Philip Estes. Blessida Jaira Hubak Flores. Kimberly Suzette Guzman. Meredith Rose Heer. Un G Her. Grace J. Kim. Jonathan Tadao Lau. Graduating summa cum laude, K. G. Lerng. Caitlin Sabrina Lombera. Conda Deborah Malumbo. Kameki Morris. Alexander Gabriel Paz. Zaemelis Ramos Rodriguez. Josue Reynoso Jr. Brianna Relas. Olivia Faith Silva. G Gianna Nicole Vertucci. Olivia Caroline Wilhite. Annie Marie Williams. Seun Yun. Luya Chung graduating summa cum laude. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Applied Psychology. Graduating summa cum laude, Lisa K. Bell. Aaron Elizabeth Carpenter. Graduating summa cum laude, Giselle Cruz Santos Silvestri. Jessica N. Trujillo. Christian Williams. Lexi Elise Witte. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Cinema and Media Arts, our truth tellers and media makers of tomorrow, Darnell Kamal Boone. Jesse T. Creesman. Graduating summa cum laude, An Da. Kylie Jane Filoni. Morgan Victoria Finnegan. Evan Paul France. Adam Elijah Gaddis. Jonathan Connor Gillespie. Liz Hilliard. Graduating summa cum laude, Emily Grace Hamoki. John Winston Knight. Victor Benedict Miller V. Michael Nerud. Paul Joseph Pojo Rieger. <laughs> Mari Andra Ruggles. Laura, Lauren Michelle Smart. Emma Spees. Jana Thomas Reed. Dana Sharon Womack.
receiving a Master's of Arts in Public Relations and Reputation Management, Lauren Nicole Peterson. Malik Shahid. These are the thought leaders amongst culture creators, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism and Integrated Media, Andrea Lauren Basista. Betsube Camacho Dominguez. Travia Denise Forte. Ashley Grace Grams. Laura Song. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Public Relations, Emma L. Fabros. Kobe Tyler Turangan. Graduating, Laura Song. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Communication Studies, Rachel Chang. <laughs> Hunter Dedarian. Graduating summa cum laude, Karen Kezia Godwin. Zane Douglas Moore. Alden Christian Rosalim. Morrison Zito. Receiving a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Music and a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration, Jordan Michael Fox. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor's of Arts in Music, Sarah R. Newman. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Studio Arts, Parker N. Dellis. Claire Elizabeth Fugel. <laughs> Hannah Reyes Sapigao. <laughs> Tori Tatiishi. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Music in Music Composition. No. Receiving a Bachelor of Music in Music Education. Lauren Quendrith Parton. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Music in Worship Arts, Abraham Joel Valles. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Science in Design, Camille C. Garcia. Receiving a Bachelor of Science in Studio Arts, Isaac Daniel Adams. Kimberly Maria Botten. Okay. I'm missing this name. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Anderson. <laughs> Emma Ruth Fellows. <laughs> Trisha Marie Dela Cruz Porter. <laughs> Rebecca Robinson Shook.
And it's too quiet in here. One more time, class of 2021. Missed this the last two years, and we're back. Come on, Biola graduates, class of 2021, you have reached this milestone in your educational journey. It's a journey that has been both exhilarating and I'm sure at times exhausting. It's a journey that's taken you to new heights and, and maybe even a few new depths. It's a journey that has made you question and struggle in ways you might not have anticipated. But it is a journey that is over. Done. All right. So as you depart from here, you're gonna be joining a community of Biola alumni who are making a difference for the good, for the cause of Christ. So in that sense, it's, it's not over. You're with us for life. And I trust Biola has impressed upon you that you must take the challenges of our world seriously. You must be a light where there is darkness, a hope where there is despair, a steward of kindness in a world of hostility. You must be what the prophet Isaiah calls a repairer of the breach, fixing those things that are broken do so as redemptive agents. So I charge you graduates to be ambassadors of Christ, upholding the biblical truth of integrity and sacrifice and justice and compassion. I challenge you to live selflessly, to define yourself not in terms of what you do or who you impact or what your legacy will be. I challenge you to define yourself in Jesus. And it is in his name that I commission you now. So go in the name of the one who was born in a manger and died on a cross for our sins and risen from the dead and will one day come again. So graduating class, one more time, please stand so we can say thank you and congratulations. So graduates, I'm going to give you a charge, uh, and I'm going to ask you to respond collectively with the words, we will. So here we go. Graduates of the Biola University Class of 2021, as God has called you, will you commit to being a light to the world? We will. All right. These graduates are surrounded by a company of witnesses, great cloud of witnesses, Pastor Foster throngs of guests celebrating with them today. And to those of you who are here flanking these graduates, before them, behind them, on their right and on their left, I ask you to follow my charge also by saying the words we will. So to those of you who have supported these students in their journey, I ask you, will you join me in praying for or encouraging those you know in this class of 2021 as they graduate from Biola University today? All right, I believe they will. So Biola University graduates, class of 2021, it's time to go now. Not just to your celebrations, but it's time to go in the spirit of the one who calls you disciple to a world that needs you, the love you embody, the grace you radiate, the convictions you bear, the courage you'll muster, the wisdom and knowledge you possess, go now to the next leg of your journey with the hope and knowledge that indeed to live is Christ. Now please, all of us join these graduates in standing for the benediction which will be given by Biola University trustee, Mrs. Marilyn Long. Let us pray. O oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, we rejoice on this special graduation day. We thank you for each graduate. We thank you for this very important milestone in their lives. 
We thank you for the love and support of their parents, their families, and their friends. We thank you for the faculty, the professors, and the teachers who have taught, mentored, and guided them. We pray for these graduates as they search for employment or as they move to further studies. May you grant them health and well-being. Bless them in all of your ways, Lord. Bless them with an abundant life shaped by love, kindness, humility, service, and a pursuit of truth and of justice. May they find meaning and purpose through their spirituality, their service, their work, their relationships, and their dedication to learning. Please send forth these graduates as they carry the gospel of Christ to everyone they encounter. Let your Holy Spirit enlighten their hearts, their minds, and their souls. Guide their actions so that they may advance the work of your kingdom for your honor and your glory. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We pray this in the blessed name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please exit this stage, this gymnasium, because we're getting ready for the next one. Thank you.